Adversity, bring it. The struggle, we welcome it. Snooze on life, never that. We are Dave Regina and Mike Perella, and this is the No Snooze Podcast. Come on. Welcome back, No Snooze Podcast, episode 127. I'm in the booth with the big three, my brothers, Michael, the show Pirelli, Claudio, the voice, Valenzuela, and I am Dave, the pasty, pasty body, wishing I was in Puerto Rico or somewhere with a tan, Regina. Um, This is technically our last episode before the Christmas holiday, so happy holidays to all of you and a merry, merry Christmas to everybody. How politically correct Am I? I? I guess you the politically correct part is saying happy holidays. All I can say is thankfully right? we have you on this podcast because <laughs> I'm not doing that. Right. Uh, but yeah, man, I did a little manscaping action here. I could tell. Right? You look and, smooth. And, but, so first of all, I look smooth, but now I look even whiter. And I there's something about like a, a nice tan that gives you a, a boost of confidence. So I might go hit the salon, get a little uh, fake tan. boost of... Uh, no, nah, I wouldn't do, the, do that. You do the rub-in stuff? No, I do an actual tanning bed. Because that gives you like at least the vitamin D. Oh, well, when I say fake tan, that includes tanning. Tan. You know what I'm saying? Um, Does it give you vitamin D? Is yeah, like bro. D? Absolutely. UV vitamin D. Are you just making it up? No, man. No listen, idea. it's the big. I'm the big vitamin. The big vitamin. <laughs> the big vitamin. Uh, but yeah, man. So listen, another week. We're back. Thank you to everybody. You guys have been. Um, you know, the support has been incredible, especially with the reels and stuff on Instagram. Yeah. The amount of shares. I I'm still intrigued that there's some good stuff that we say. Who the hell are these people <laughs> listening and watching and sharing us? Sharing stuff? it, right? Yes. That's the one thing. Like Still I can see I can see you looking at it and making fun of us, but actually sharing our content is pretty Well, they dope. probably are. They're probably sending it to friends <laughs> right. and be like, look at this Look at this guy. idiot. Yeah. Oh, I didn't Which think about that. It's fine. If that's um, the case, shout out. Yeah, man. Uh, so listen, uh, you know, life, uh, Mike and I and CV, we had a, a beautiful life conversation for about two hours before we even pressed the record button, right? So we're we're... We're locked in, though. We're attempting to to bring the energy. But one thing that I didn't share with you guys, which is actually, um, it was terrible that happened to me. But I was out to dinner with a, a family friend, right? And uh, the female met us. At, she was already out with us. And the male friend was coming to meet us out uh, for dinner. He has children as well. So he gets a, a phone call. I mean, I'm sorry. She gets a phone call from her spouse. And is like, listen, you know, I found so-and-so upstairs. Like, this is not good. I need to call 911. Right. And come to find out their freaking son, who was in their early 20s, ended up dying. And we were out to dinner and like they didn't know that he was going to pass right away. Right. And it, it, it kind of seemed like an overdose of some sort because they did have to come and like hit him with Narcan and stuff. So immediately I started thinking like like heroin and stuff like that. Um, but it just completely like shifted again. Like the understanding that life and this holiday season, like just waking up is such a a, a uncounted blessing. Right. And every day, you know, we do need to find ways to be to be grateful, thankful for the little things that we have, regardless of whatever's going on in our life. Yep. Um, But yeah, I mean, you know, once once this comes out, I would have no problem, you know, saying the name and rest of peace to this this person. But, um, you know, I want to keep their stuff a little confidential. But I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Right. Like. It just, uh, I, I don't know. It's not that bad. <laughs> I don't know where to transition from there. I, no, I, I get it, but it's real It's real stuff, you know, and it, it's just but a th- horrible situation. Here's your transition. Thanksgiving. Good time to reflect on that stuff and enjoy. How mm. was your Thanksgiving? Oh, yeah. Well, Thanksgiving was great. Um, I ate a lot. I mean, I, I literally pounded two full plates of everything. My favorite dish this year was um, the penil, CV. Right. That is, uh, you've told me this before. Is it the rice? Pork. What? Oh, I love pork. pork. I, you know, Daddy makes pork every yeah. week. Yes. Yeah. Y- yeah. Y- you know, Mikey Crockpots yes. makes Mikey, pork shoulder Mikey, every week. Mikey Crockpots. Every week. Look, that's, that's what you look like. Mikey you actually Crock-Pots. got a. a I'm tucking pork it in and I'm tying it because this is what I wear when I got back day <laughs> and I need to do my 50 pound poles and. Sometimes my lap might pull right off the bone. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to tired. age myself. Yes. Um, but you look like, um, like Butthead. Do you know butthead. who Beavis and Beavis? Butthead? I do know Beavis and Butthead. I know Beavis. Beavis Does he butthead? wear a hoodie? I'm a big movie I'm, guy. I'm gonna put up a. Uh, I'm gonna put like a, a side by side between you and him. <laughs> but that's that's you. So what? my, I don't know about if you have this rule. I try to have matching logos. If I ever have logos on, mm-hmm. I don't really like the white with the red. 
So I gotta get a nice you can't even red see the white, dad though. hat. No, so that's why I'm covering it. That's why oh, I'm wearing it like this. Oh, gotcha. Because I dropped Livy off at school one day. I had the shorts, no snooze shorts. I had the sh- the sweat uh, hoodie, and I had a hat, all different logo colors. And I was like, I gotta yeah. get together. <laughs> Yeah, you got to line it up. Yeah, check it out, nosnewshop.com. Nosnewshop.com. New <laughs> credit card in the back end because uh, <laughs> the like company's FTX and BlockFi <laughs> got shut down. Uh, oh my Shout God. out if you had money there. Hopefully you didn't. Um, so, yeah, Thanksgiving was tremendous. I We have a family tradition of going to the football games to tailgate mm-hmm. to start the day off. And I have to say, I've figured it out. The reason I like food so much is it immediately brings you back to all the good times you had before experiencing that food item, okay? So, like, when I have a Bloody Mary and a bacon, egg, and cheese with chili, and it's a little crisp. I'm a, I'm a faithful guy. I'm into God these days. So when you say Bloody Mary, I'm thinking of the, uh, the mother. You say, mother say, some, say some uh, Hail Marys for me. Because, <laughs> so just like, and I, as I was enjoying it, and it's, like, cold out, and it's warm, and then you hit the nice cold bloody, like, I just thought back to all the funny day afters of go, rolling into Thanksgiving and shout out Jimmy Locke, my dad's friend that works with him. He used to love when me and Frank would roll up after going out the night before Christmas Eve or Christmas we had, Eve we had a couple uh, of, before a Thanksgiving, couple Thanksgiving Eve and rolling into like a tailgate the next day as like a recent college grad. <laughs> I was laughing to myself how funny showing up at like 6 a.m. Yeah. to tailgate a high school football game <laughs> and kind of continue the ride. And I looked down at uh, Livy because she came with me, and then my brother had Frankie, and I just thought to myself, "Wow, we've come a long way," you know. Absolutely have. Um, but I think you you mentioned it over the probably over like the Halloween stuff that we were talking about. Uh, but it's just such a nice thing to see the full transition of like you know these holidays and what it means yeah. to now be like a parent where we used to have some like you know great times now i'm freaking struggling with this elf on the shelf oh yeah. i mean like <laughs> this is this is no joke you got so first of all his name is winter oh do, are Call they me. all named winter or can you name no him? no we just named him okay we named him aren't you supposed to name him i think you're yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah but I ours is ours is winter aka winty so you That's know good. first thing when when callie wakes we up have, i'm uh, like jingle jackson by the way jingle jackson <laughs> I like that that's elite <laughs> every time you but, you, you, but you wake up forget. you put on michael jackson and try Yo, to find dude, him. there's been a couple t- <laughs> there's been a couple times i forget to like you know throw Ooh. winter in a new spot yeah and immediately when she wakes up, she's like, where's Winter? Where's Winter? And I, I, I find some good spots. Yeah. I mean, he's hanging out of drawers. He's up in lights. Like, he's, they, they give you, like, the Velcro hands so he can, like, hang from oh, things. Oh, they do? Yeah, man. It, it, I got to get one. It, it's big time. And, and it's an Callie, investment, though. She's fully bought into this. Um, oh. They give you a little book, you know, that you can, you can read to the children and kind of explain it. But basically, the way we tell her is, like, listen, you know, Winty works for, for Santa Claus. And, you know, he's Watch here you. watching you. To make sure that you get on the good list. So she was crying hysterically about like oh. something. And I said, Winty's watching you. You know, <laughs> if you stop crying, then, you know, you're going to be a good girl. And she was like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Dally. Isn't it so funny? <laughs> okay, Dally. And like, she just stopped crying. I'm like, whoa, this, I need to keep this thing here all year. Right. We've, yeah. been, we've been using the Santa thing since October. Like people were like, what? And we're like, Santa's watching. Mm-hmm. Oct- it's, it's coming. But she's super, super, Livy's super hyped. For th- uh, Christmas. For Christmas, yeah, yeah. fire. Uh, um, but yeah, Thanksgiving, start off with a bang, tailgate, and then we head back to my parents. We did just uh, my parents this year because we're trying to let travel less with the kids during the holidays. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and that's then, annoying. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> Sorry. It's, but it's having so, so many families and like, you know, from my family's divorced, you know, Karina's family's divorced and like it's trying like to visit so all styles. the grandparents yeah. and like... It's just a lot, you know, like it's and, just it's just a headache. And you don't have them all to yours. Because yeah, it's no, tough. no yeah. personalities. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a yeah. lot going on. I give you credit. It's <laughs> it's overwhelming. I have to say it was easier, but you do miss like seeing everyone. It's yeah. a it's a because sometimes you're anticipating. Maybe it's a, a lesson about life. You're anticipating about going to the next event. Yep. So you don't really you aren't very present. Right. You're not enjoying it. Whereas this time we were fully present, but it was exhausting. We had. Little Frankie, Leo, who's running around now, cracks me up, that kid. Um, he looks like a little uh, caveman. They call him the caveman. He yeah. looks like my kid. He's got a great middle name. Uh, Leo, what is it? David? It's your, it's your, isn't that your nephew? Um, <laughs> and then Livy and Juliana. It was, it was uh, it's I'll just a lot. In. Four kids, like. They sound like side age. dishes. I got little Leo, little Frankie. Yeah. <laughs> well, we did go to little Frankie's. Uh, my brother is obsessed with a chef that is. You told us. 
Uh, yeah. But yes. Go ahead. So, but it was I was googling him after you uh, told me. Isn't he hilarious? Yes. 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 But is, he's is Frank. What? What's the last name again? Frank Prisonzano, Pr- Prisonzano who Prisonzano. is a cousin of the guy that I know now, but I didn't connect the two, which was amazing. That's funny that F Pretty Frank Pirelli is going to F Prizzy. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. Hundred percent. And uh, it was amazing. Tremendous night. Nice to get away from the kids. Um, it was a trek to get in the city, but I forgot how fun it is to sip a little wine on the way in. <laughs> He's telling the same exact story that yeah. he just told last yeah. year. But <laughs> clearly he tell us why. Did yeah. I say this already? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, the having, I'm having deja vu. But literally, just long said that story last short, uh, Juliana has been a little sick, so Daddy isn't running on a lot of uh, sleep wait, today. Wait, let me guess. You had a nickname for Frank. It was Sauvignon Franc. Is no, that right? Incorrect. What, what, wow, right? That, that, was, that was really good. Um, that, was it. that was good, Dave. Uh, right? <laughs> all right, I guess I'll talk about Jim Miguel. <laughs> so, yes, I know you're probably thinking to yourselves and everyone watching, the millions around the world are probably thinking like, wow, Mike looks good. Um, <laughs> 58 countries now. 58 <laughs> countries. Uh, so, no, I, you know, finally, finally starting to get into the gym consistently again, finishing <laughs> workouts, finishing workouts, finishing not workouts. only doing them at a high level, finishing them, getting stronger. I'm almost at the point where I need more donuts. I got two sets of donuts. I'm going to need a third because I'm knocking on the door of 335 again. Oof. But three plates is 315. Yeah, but I'm Can not Can I ask you a question? Are you getting like 15-pound donuts? Like what kind of donuts are we talking Dude, about no, here? The, the donuts, 45-pound. Are you getting 45? I have Lou Ferrigno how strength. Are you, how are you running out of donuts? Like, What you, do you mean? He's only got four. Two, need to, sit on the, two need to sit on the- Yeah, uh, but you have- Fine, you have four, 225. You can't put all the weight. The, the rack will fall over on you if you got 300 pounds. <laughs> can't put Jim Miguel, you didn't weight. know it was for toddlers? <laughs> yeah, dude. What, are you out of your mind? My rack is screaming when I rack it. It's like- yeah. Yeah. I love when you don't put music and you just hear your voice in the background. It's like- oh, a- oh. And then you hear the- <laughs> It's like just so- it, Yeah, the ASMR. I've been trying to- uh, uh, What's the word for efficiency when you like you do it? You, I'm trying to streamline. <laughs> stream, my guy. Streamline. Listen, you're right. We finish you finish each other's sandwiches. Linguist. My linguist. <laughs> I'm trying to streamline everything. So in my head, I'm like picking a song drives me crazy. Why don't you just share the sweet sounds of muscle building? But then it's sped up, so it's like. Ew, 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 ew. Ew. <laughs> my, I've been. Do you? All right. This is actually be hopefully helpful for people breathing. What's the correct? Yes, I breathe when I work out. Yes. <laughs> What's absolutely. the correct cadence? So I'm going to tell you what I've been doing, and I want you to critique it. Okay. Okay. The big gym. The big gym. The big gym. I prefer. The I've big, been the big fitness. Unracking. I go. Right. I take a big breath in to unrack. Wrong. Get it up. I know. I'm telling there you. There you go. And wrong. then I go through the nose down. What? That's like reverse. Through the mouth out up. But I no, go. You're... I hold. I go. At the okay. last, like maybe. 25 so you're not all right so give it to me depending David. on what it is that you're you're working right if it's if this is a regular working set versus your one rep maximum so on the one i'll break down the uh the maximum you can get us now right so if you're if you're oh. doing a max a max effort that's what it's called, lifting right? weights and selling real estates <laughs> real estates so if it's a um if it's a one rep max, right, which is known as a one RM, if you see that in any fitness program or something like that, you're actually supposed to take that breath in prior to racking, uh, unracking the weight, right? So you would breathe in, yeah, lift the weight, I went. then no, you're already breathing, so there's nothing, do on, nothing on the weight down. Weight down yeah, if it's a one rep max, and then oh. you explode out. All the way up to the top. Okay, but that's so you, much you different. release right at the chest. Yes, no, really? not at, at the chest. So you on get your, up on your upward, now. on your upward trend. So, so it's like this, right? It goes. Unrack. No, you un unra- you, you breathe. Go. Yep. Yep. You want to keep it in as long. About yes. here, you blow out. Yes, you want to keep it in honestly as long as possible. Um, because it why is that? Because it tightens. I I don't I don't I, know. So the... I believe this is the reason. Good. I think it's because it tightens everything. And there's less variables to get injured because your air is like a basically mm-hmm. a weight belt, like it's acting as mm-hmm. a weight belt. So that's the one rep. And then if you're doing a, what's called a, a working set, pretty right? good, huh? Working set, you should always be breathing. 100%. But what's the cadence? For you were that? good. You were you were that's really it. good. On so that. so unrack, if you're going, if you're on rack, is there yes. why through the nose? Why do I feel stronger when I suck well, through the nose and push the mouth? In through the nose, out through the mouth is accurate. Absolutely. We are saying, why is that? Yeah, like why? What's the, what's st- the science behind you're, it? You're the big science. I am the big science, but I don't really know why. I mean, you're just always taught to breathe in. I know some lifters are crazy. They go in through one nostril, 
and then out through the other. It's How do you have that control? Yeah, I don't know. It's it's controlled breathing. That's exactly what it is. So I've been trying to apply that actually in the sauna. One nostril, one nostril. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not the big science, but does it's, it have something to do with what you're putting out, which is your um, CO2? Yeah, right. The CO2. So yeah, there's you, probably something. You get more of that out with your mouth open because it's a larger orifice to blow out. Yeah. CV. Yeah. Or it's more controlled because you can like squeeze your lip. You go. The big orifice. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, no, that that's actually accurate though. So you're definitely in on the way. You know, in on the way down of a movement and then out. Whereas a lot of people, when you first like even try to put put the weights together with the breathing, you actually do reverse for whatever reason. Yeah. Like naturally, right? I, I don't know why. I haven't really thought about the breath until recently when it's been getting into higher weights mm -hmm. and I've gas out. Well, you quicker. need it though. You yeah. You really yeah. need it. You don't need it like when you're just doing kind of like yeah. the maintenance stuff. And now that uh, AC's got me on a, a, a muscle building strength program. Now I'm really like push the envelope a little bit and have to really focus on it because I feel the difference. Yeah. When you get out of the cadence and you're in between a set, it's you just like gas out. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Yes, absolutely. You know? Like but for whatever reason, you like cough or you you know you got something in your nose on the on the. Well, that's because you have dust. Um, Dude, Jim, <laughs> Jim so bad. Well, they finally put a heater in. Okay. Guys, shout out! It's been how long since I've been in the cold? Oh uh, yeah, that's been and a, it's like getting cold. A year now. So we got a nice heater with a thermo. Okay. In my gym, Jim Miguel, and then they won't be in there anymore. Wow. And Perfect. I can finally Perfect. dust. Turf it, it, do turf some it. stuff. I mean, we don't have any money, but <laughs> once we get a little money. Or a sponsor. You know, shout out to uh, Sports Authority. Is that even a thing anymore? Or Jim Miguel Sports goods. Authority? Oh, yeah, Dick Sporting Goods. Who's out of business? Right. Like, Modell. Fila. <laughs> Modell. We'll take anything, Fila. God damn it. Just get, it's give, us, back in. give us some shit. My man needs some turf, man. Um, no, that's good. Yeah, for me, uh, the workout game, you know, uh, the big consistent, I guess I'll go with. But uh, <laughs> I've um, uh, 19 days off. You know, I'm going to definitely get to 20 by the end of, of the year. Last year, I finished with uh, 41 days of not working out. Uh, so this year was a significant improvement. Pardon my French, but that's rookie shit. That's, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's cool to think about. You know, I don't know why it means it doesn't mean anything to me, but like it's pretty impressive. Just, it, it, it is impressive because you go through a lot of like, you know, just bad days. Yeah. You know, just as a, a human being. And um, some you know, would argue I, that's what you need the most. Correct. I Well, that's how I think, you know, and, and I always try to, you know, I, I know people don't always get this from me but you know i still have the bad days just like everybody else does but I, like we were talking off air when i get those negative thoughts i just continue to do the action even though while i'm doing the action i have the negative thoughts whereas most people differ because when they have that negative thought they, they're not able to produce the action does that make sense 100 percent. you have made me I'm my you have made me prioritize my lifts now not because of enjoying it and strength, but for mental clarity and creativity for work. I've literally made it, and I've uh, discussed with Dana, and she kind of laughed at me. Basically, it's a part of my work day now versus it's a nice to-do. And I feel like the hour, I've put my stopwatch on, and I limit it to an hour. Whatever I get done in that hour, I'm done. And if I'm lacking and slow, you don't get it done. So it's naturally made me work more efficiently and actually stay focused because mm -hmm. I know I just have an hour. I don't want to extend it. Yep. And uh, it's been a, a a highlight of my day and I think made me more productive. Even though I'm sacrificing an hour, I'm gaining back the efficiency on the back end because of my clarity when I, I come that. off of it. Yeah. Um, the clarity – absolutely but the creativity for me i could really really relate problem to. solving yeah absolutely yeah. and it's amazing because i was actually listening to a podcast that mentioned this type of thing too what's a podcast when, when you're doing uh yeah no snooze shut them out so like, when subscribe. you when you're doing a an action like that but you have something positive in your ear they say for whatever reason and i really related to this when you're doing that action you are consuming the information that's coming into you but it, you just naturally start thinking of your own positive actions, right? And it, it really provides you with a level of creativity that most people don't have. And it's the um, uh, the, seroton the serotonin mm -hmm. in your brain that kicks in, and that's the creativity part of your brain. It's that left side of the brain um, that gets ignited through physical action. So when you're actually working out physically, scientifically, whichever way you want to put it, more even though you're sore as shit, it doesn't matter because you're still being more, you're automatically programming your brain to be uh, in a creative state. Tremendous. The little adjustment I've made as well is that I was listening to a lot of like real estate stuff mm -hmm. and financial stuff. Yep. And then I found my, my, my mind trailing. So now I went fully back to even music sometimes 
if it's something I've heard before, I kind of, my mind wanders and I'm not as like new music, like a new album and you get into it, it's tremendous because it's all new and you're listening to the new words. When you know a song, you jump to like, you already know it. So your mind travels anyway. Mm -hmm. Now I've been doing these like short motivational videos, but of people training that are either boxers or UFC fighters and it has their words while there's music. So it'll be like Connor, be like, huh, I don't give a fuck. I'm coming back and I'm going to knock everyone out and <laughs> yeah. go through dark time. Really so good. like you're kind of like your brain's on the, uh, yes. you feel like you're in like a gym and you hear like weights cracking and then you hear the pads. And it's been like these little, you know, two, three minutes. I just have on, on a, uh, a, a, a shuffle nope. and it's, I've, for whatever reason, it's really been helpful. And I feel like I'm, I feel stronger and more locked in than mm -hmm. I have in the past. I love that. Um, because sometimes I've been trying to be way too efficient and been like, I'm going to listen to an audio book while I work out. And it just, I have a disconnect. Oh, that's a good point. AC yelled at me too. He's like, dude, you should be, when you're working out, it should be all about working out. It shouldn't be about learning this, learning that. You should be focused on every set and make every set count versus trying to do two things at once. Guilty. <laughs> the big multitasker. Yeah. <laughs> AKA Mike Pirelli. But yeah, no, I'm, so I'm guilty of that as well. But now, um, what do you, you listen know? to? Nothing because your headphones got stolen. <laughs> Do you want to tell that story? Uh, so today we have an update. And by the way, thank you guys for uh, being intrigued about the headphones because I've gotten multiple messages, DMs, all that. Like, yo, did you find your headphones yet? Like, great app, but where are the headphones? You know. So and if you don't know, I mean, uh, apparently people on podcasts sometimes get gifts. Right. Send them. I need. I mean, your boy could use some new. Is headphones. it Christmas? Do you right. celebrate? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Let's go. Would you Christmas like a episode. gift? Yeah, you know what I mean. Secret Santa. This is perfect. This is perfect. You guys are secret. <laughs> He's Santa. Send it to him. <laughs> Send it to me, baby. Um, yeah, so I see this chick, man. If you didn't listen to the episode where I told the story, I lost my headphones. Well, somebody stole my headphones. I left them in the gym, and somebody stole them. So then I go back you know, a couple months after, and my, my phone connects to the headphones, and then I end up not finding them. But I see two chicks that have them on. My mind's wandering, going crazy. Long story short, I end up taking both headphones from these <laughs> females and checking the serial numbers. Right. And they weren't it. So I, I apologize, gave it back. So I've seen them since one of them still wears the headphones and one of them got new headphones. Sketchy. I don't know why you're doing that. I don't think that's but sketchy. She I probably did. was like, if I'm wearing these and this big dude's coming over <laughs> me, I got to get rid of these things. She sold those. The next right. Day. OK, so, yeah. So she got rid of those headphones or whatever. Um, but then today I see this other chick. She's got the same headphones on. So I'm like, maybe she sold them to her. I know that's it. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, but so I couldn't. I, I got. I don't know why, but I couldn't bring myself to do what I did to these other two females to her. So I just, I kind of just let it go. I mean, I kept my eye on her. Did you connect? To see if she knew. Yeah, I tried you, to. Oh, I tried. It didn't connect. I tried to connect, and it didn't connect. Okay. Mm. So the only chance would be to check the serial number. Go up to her and say, "Can I right. see your serial?" And I was not willing to do that again. Why didn't then, you say those are pretty cool headphones? I'm thinking about buying a pair. Can, can I, I check see the serial number? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Check your headphones. Then you just well, you know where the serial number is. Yeah. Right? Oh, absolutely. Now I know where it is. Yeah, but don't you have to take off the uh, the battery plate? I, no. Well, so they, so it's on the side. That. I thought. Yeah, yeah. So you. I stole uh, the way that I did it was I was on their phone. Like uh, they took their phone uh, in the settings and it clicked on their beats. You're mad invasive. That's what I'm saying. I'm so I couldn't, I couldn't do it. So uh, long story short, my headphones are still out there. Um, so if anybody has them, please. I mean, I, I'd appreciate these things. Back. I've never wanted to have stolen something so bad in my life <laughs> to like re-gift them to you for right. Christmas. Imagine you did that. Uh, scumbag. It'd be great. That would be scumbag. so fun. Um, I'd wear them too, like in the parking lot. So you drive you nuts. Horrible. You should wear them when you're at Jim Miguel. Post it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let See him notice it. <laughs> it's like a movie at the end where everything comes together. It's just mm -hmm. me. I'll be pissed. Um, so, yeah, I mean, are, are you ready to uh, get into the topic today? That was the topic. That My was body, it. All right. It? We'll see you guys next time. We wanted to take a quick second to let you guys know that we partnered with our good friends over at Orgain.com. We're happy to offer our listeners 30% off by entering the code NOSNOOZE30. Again, that's no snooze 30 for 30% 30 off your first order. If you're on the market for a new protein powder, nutritional shake, protein bar, or Mike's favorite, collagen peptides, Orgain is your one-stop shop. As all of you know, my Crohn's disease is currently in remission, and the only protein I use is from Orgain. My personal favorites are the chocolate peanut butter and the vanilla bean. With the code, you can try a two-pound tub for under $20. Talk about not snoozing. Go get yours today. Now, back to the epi. Um, so the way that this one kind of came about was because I had posted something on, on IG 
that got like a lot, it got a lot of traction and a lot of shares. And it was basically me talking about one of my insecurities. Right. And I think when, when you see a post of us and I put like, you know, our weakest moment or like, you know, my insecurity, people, they attract, you get attracted to that because they want to, they want to see, I guess, what problems you have, you know, going on in your life. What do you struggle with? Makes you human. Right. To maybe see how you overcome it or whatever it is. So the, the concept of the post was basically me admitting to something that I want to do less of in the new year, which was stop caring about what people really think. Um, and I think it's a good topic because I struggle with it. But even though I struggle with it, I still find the ways to make sure that I'm making a progressive movement moving forward. Um, I think a lot of people get crippled by this concept. And I want to clearly describe some different thought processes, some ways through conversation with Mike and I of, you know, basically how to not care or why you shouldn't really care what people think. And it's a double-edged sword because we always, especially in a public light, right, whether it's personally or professionally, you want to put out a product that's, you know, definitely um, attractable. Uh, Is that a word? I don't think so. I don't think so. But it's, like, uh, but it's it, it, yeah. people are attracted be to, socially right? socially aware. Yeah, and you want to make sure that you're doing it ethically and, like, you're doing things logically and you're putting out something that people are going to like. Um, so I think we're all at a place in our lives, I mean, at least in this room, where we can admit, yeah, to a, to a level, you definitely care and you should care what people think, but it should never cripple what you're doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? 100%. In terms of the topic that we're, we'll yeah. discuss? Yeah, because you're never going to escape people's judgments. Right. I think it's human nature, right? To, to want to be liked, especially for me. Like, I want everybody to like me. We're social creatures. But people. you're still out here stealing my headphones, so you don't really like me that much. <laughs> well, you know even, what I'm saying? I, I would say, I'm not, I mean, this isn't my specialty, but if you're even being an in, introvert, I think a lot of that sometimes stems from people's fear of judgment. I would, I'm an right? introvert, no? <laughs> am I an introvert? I don't think so, David. No, I'm an extrovert. I think you're introvert. the most extrovert. <laughs> I know, man. I e- you created that. extra. <laughs> I'm extra. I'm just extra. He who wears a mink coat is an extrovert. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> the quote, that's what I should have done. That should be the dime. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna rock a minky. The next. First episode. off, first off, the dime slash the quotes. I love how they started with like actual people's quotes, <laughs> and they just become Dave's, Dave's thoughts thoughts in the morning, which I actually enjoy, <laughs> and they've done well. Hey, listen, so, you're all right because it's like. Where else are you going to get that quote? You're not, because this was Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so the, we have the only quote on this yeah, News Podcast. That's right. That's right. Go like, follow, subscribe. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the first thing, like, I, you know, I was kind of thinking about this is, like, you can't let this prevent you, right? The, the concept of caring what people think, it should never prevent you from living your life to to its fullest or or stop you or hinder you in any way from making the progress that you know you want to make right and i think a big reason for that is because it's it's not their life right so like at the end of the day it's none of their business yep. but it's a very hard thing to grasp because it gets it gets confusing and you don't want to sound like an a-hole and be like listen it's just none of your business i'm going to go out and do what i'm going to do but you do have to learn how to separate things like People are not going to have your best interest, right? You're going to have your best interest. People could cheer for you all they want, and you could have a lot of people and good people in your corner, uh, but they're never going to have the same investment in yourself as uh, in you as you would have in in yourself, right? Yeah, and it, uh, I think we're also saying is, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. uh, you also all always are going to have different perspectives yes because you have different lives different viewpoints different histories yep which then shape how you perceive things yes 100 percent. you know like there's certain things in my life that happen i'm like oh because i went through this uh i then think of this whereas if you go through something completely different when yep. that happens you think of something completely different right you know um yeah it's just the reality of life you know we're social creatures we're dealing with people day to day we're interacting constantly. There's such a web of interaction with people that at no matter what you do, good or bad, there's some type of judgment that's going to come from Mm -hmm. your actions. Yep. And I lump this in with control and think to the point of what I can control is being a good person, having the best interests of people I talk to and not trying to like suck them dry of their value, you know, and have a very relationship where they're like, Oh, I like Mike because He's selfless when it comes to like helping me out with things and or makes me happy. 
because CV said something very ph- philosophical earlier. It's not so much how you say things, it's how you make people feel about things. Mm-hmm. And there's, I'm sure there's a stat somewhere, a quote. It's basically like people will forget your actual words. They'll remember the emotion that it created. Yes, they'll all, they'll never remember what you did for them. They'll remember exactly how, how you, you made, made them, them feel, feel. Yeah. which is kind of the way I try to think about things just in general, you know, personally, professionally. Like when you leave a conversation, do you think those people left the conversation feeling better than they did previously and or not worse? Right. Sometimes you're not going into conversation to try to brighten someone's day. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you say, like, how are you doing today? And they're they say something, we have a habit of just saying oh yeah me good i'm good too right. versus like oh you had a good thanksgiving like did you say local oh that's amazing did cali have a great time oh you you know i'd love to see that livy had a great time too like all right let's get into it mm-hmm. just that next there's i'll link this back to like real estate so like with my mailers which are very old school a lot of people will send a mailer and say like hey listen there's um you know this uh your property the average for the building was $489 a square foot, right? So in my head, I'm like, what can I do to take it to the next step where I'm showing them that it's specific for them, right? Like it's a specific specific what's in it for me moment where I'm adding a little value to them. So then I took the next step and say, well, your, your unit is 405 square feet, which then would mean your property potentially could sell for this number. Mm -hmm. It's it's being used as a reference, but if you want it more accurate, let me know. But it's that next step that I think you can have the control of so that people can have a better perception of you and then coming to the realization that no matter what you do, I can make this amazing report, send you free food, but if you don't like me, you don't like me. Right. And in a book I read recently, it's called The Fool or The Favorite. And sometimes in life, you're going to be the fool. Sometimes you'll be the favorite. Mm-hmm. Your goal is to attract to more of the favorites because you don't want to waste your time on people that don't want to be wasted on. Right. Right? Very good. I like that. So it it comes with the maturity of, for me, it's come with trial and error where there's been times where I've tried to please everyone. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, it made me unhappy and made them unhappy. And I, in my head, I said, it's great that, you know, you want to do this thing. For example, running around with all these real estate markets or like taking on, um, taking on philanthropic things when you can't deliver and you spread yourself too thin because you just be like, I really want to do it for them. And I don't want them to think that I don't care. And you take on something that you shouldn't because you're afraid of the judgment that will come if you say no. At the end of the day, it's worse. Because rather than you, how you do it very eloquently, listen, you know, I appreciate the opportunity. I don't have the time to commit to this to make it successful. Mm-hmm. I wish you the best of luck. Let me know if there's anything I can do. Instead of doing that and you take it on, you do a bad job, it leaves right. a way worse taste yes, than if you're up front. Great point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to circle back to something that I said earlier because I, I didn't get into this thought process. But um, people really not knowing what's best for you in any moment right yeah. and i think you do this really well and i have a specific example um about it, it's it's a financial piece that i i made a, a bad decision but you need to learn from your own choices right and like there is something to be said about you making a decision for yourself and then taking full responsibility and accountability for that action and it, it plays to the point of not really caring what people think because when you practice that um I don't know what that's called. I mean, it's not a. So it's like a practice. Yeah, it's like a. It's not really a skill, but yeah, it kind of is a skill. skill. A decision making is a skill. Is a skill. I, I, oh, that's absolutely right. Decision making is definitely a skill. Um, so when you practice these decisions and you're able to make these decisions regardless of what's you know what other people think about you, and you take responsibility and you take the control on, and then when it does fail, you take even more accountability for it. Right? Like Peloton. Look at Peloton. Still have it in my house. I enjoy it. I I listen. Enjoy it. Absolutely. I still spin a lot. I love spin. But from a financial piece, right, I made a pretty poor choice, I guess, looking at it now today because I've lost a significant amount of money. And I was at a point that like, you know, I was ready to tell everybody, invest, 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 invest. I've said it, you know, here. But I needed to make that decision for me to ultimately learn, like, listen, don't really talk about financial 
things because, you know, something could be so great and it could be soaring really high. But now if I'm telling people and now people go out and just take my advice, it was a big lesson for me, right? Like I, I just, I needed to make that decision. It was a bad decision at this point. I mean, at the end of the day, it could skyrocket again. And that would be a really good decision, right? It's not over. And, you know, the hope is, you know, that it, that it trends upward, but the reality is it's just not, but I would have never learned that if like, I'm not making decisions like that and learning to actually fail. And do you think that experience, if you were going to invest in the next thing, Mm -hmm. what would you do differently this time? Was there something that you saw that you didn't do or was it just like, listen, I thought it was a good company. I should have done that. What's no, honestly, I think I was too, uh, looking back, I was too focused on, um, (laughs) my man is watching the world cup over here. I I I don't blame him. I was, I I was way too focused on the current environment. Right. Okay. During uh, an investment period during the COVID-19 pandemic, um, you know, I should have been more aware of although the technology behind Peloton, I think, is a one in the fitness industry. I don't think there's anything that really compares to it. Mm-hmm. It's basically your one stop shop, even though it is a bike that goes absolutely nowhere. They've attached weights to it. Um, but I should have thought of the social impact that an actual gymnasium has on the fitness industry. Right. Well and being able to like foresee that yeah the pandemic is not going to last forever so you know yeah. at a high point i mean i remember my um you know one of my family members basically saying listen man sell that sell that because you know it was it was it was really up yeah well, um, and looking back i should have oh no, absolutely but it's so easy to look back and be like i should have yeah but i mean just to answer that question that's kind yeah of what that's I part of why my philosophy is the way it is is because i don't want i don't like selling things so whenever I buy something, I plan on never selling it, right. whatever it is, mm-hmm. because I hate that feeling of being like, wow, there was so much I could have sold. There's nothing you do now. Um, and the other thing I would mention, and this is not financial advice, but the majority of people, like 99.9% of the market doesn't beat the market, right? right. So because you didn't make money, it doesn't mean that you're not smart or whatever. It just means that it's a difficult arena to make money yep right some would argue and why i chose real estate it's one of the easiest arenas to make money so just because i did well on a certain investment doesn't mean i'm the smart guy it just means the opportunity i chose was the the fave it was in my favor Mm -hmm. right so i think people need to be conscious of this because to loop it in when people judge you and either give you compliments or talk shit it's sometimes not warranted. Like when people give me a compliment on something, I'm like, I know the inner workings of it. It's mm-hmm. really not that impressive. It was just something that worked out. So you don't want to get in your own head because then I could go make a decision, which is stupid in the future because yep. I think my shit doesn't stink, right? Yep. Or vice versa. Mm-hmm. Someone be like, oh, that was a dumb decision, this and that. <laughs> Bitcoin. Bitcoin is down from $70,000 to sixteen, Right. And a lot of people are who see this are going to be like, wow, that was the dumbest investment of all time. Like, blah, blah. Game's not over. We're going to talk in five years, and we'll see where it is. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I'd rather be the judge right. and not take – if it was at 100, oh, you're the best, you're so smart. Absolutely. And then you get too into it, you sp- all this money, you don't think clearly. Yep. By, by removing yourself from the judgment and the – obviously, if someone's a mentor – and you value their opinion, family members, you can value their opinion, but you just have to take it with a grain of salt, knowing that it, ultimately it's your decision, your lens. You can uh, put their opinions in and help with the decision, but ultimately it's your decision. And the only person at the end of the day that you should think about when you reflect on it is you. Is you, right. Um, perfect transition into into my next point, which is those. <laughs> what's, what's right for somebody else may be completely wrong for you. I got a question for you before yep. you dive into it. I was thinking about something to drive over. In the majority of the decisions that I made that was right for me, and again, the game's not over, so who knows? It could all go south. Mm-hmm. But to date, the things that I've been looking back at and said, ooh, that was a good decision for me and my family, were things that the majority of people told me not to do. Not to do. Yeah, that's big. Definitely. And right. I think, yeah, and, and that kind of plays into this. But, Do you feel the same way with certain things? Yeah, absolutely. But I think it's also important to understand that somebody's opinion is usually based off of what they would do. Correct. 
right? Yeah. Like, so your opinion much might might be much different than mine in some things, and it might be good for you. Doesn't mean that it's a good decision for me. Hundred um, percent. What's best for somebody else could literally be the worst thing in the world for you. They, look at the old saying of um, uh, "one man's trash is another man's treasure." Right, like Gary Vee's been big on this, on these stupid like going to tag sales and like I might start doing that, grabbing three dollar like plush dolls and selling them for forty eight dollars. Yeah, right. And it's a huge business. It's a huge market. And why do people um, not do that? Because they're afraid of the judgment of you grinding or right. driving Uber, but be like, oh, you drive it. But yep. who cares? A hundred percent. Um, and I'm trying to think of, um, oh, like this. Okay, so for for me, this was the example that I was thinking about. Right, like I do think that. You know, if I could choose, I would tell people, listen, I, I think you should find some something to be grateful for. Like, I think you should listen to, you know, something faith based in the morning to, to really spark that. But the reality is I do that for me because I need to. Right. Like we were talking off air and like I live this structured lifestyle the way that I do, because I have to do that to be at my ultimate peak performance, um, you know, without getting too in depth. But like the party scene and, you know, having some drinks with my my boys is a very enticing lifestyle for me. Like I, I enjoy that. Right. But I enjoy the dynamic of being a father before any of that. But to keep me on track. I personally make the decision to listen to my man, Big Joel Osteen, in the morning. Big Joel. Right? And I do that because it's best for me. So I shouldn't be, like, trying to put that on anybody else yeah. because they might not have the same sort of issue that I have in terms of thinking that, you know, going to drink with my boys is is a pretty enticing lifestyle. It's interesting, too, because I think if you do want to influence people in a good way, right, you don't want to do it negatively – but if you lead and just do it mm -hmm. and don't really like push it on people, yep. they're much more likely to follow. Yes. Right? Like I think of a specific example. Dana has been going to church lately with Livy. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, did the whole rigmarole. You know, I don't consider myself super religious, but I feel as though like I want to be there with them no matter what the experience is, no matter if I think it's right for me yep. just to be around them. But because she hasn't been making me go with her, and Livy, and I've had my own time to like think about it. You feel as though you come to your own decision. Yes, you know me. she didn't judge me, mm -hmm. which then in turn makes me want to extend and try it. Right, like I, I like feel that. like when I want people to do things, the more I pull at them, it's like a Chinese finger trap. Yep, it just gets too tight, and you can't. And you can't. Versus pull. when you're relaxed, come this way. No, yep. you help them across the road. Come with. Come with I, I, I like that. Um, I also think when it comes to you know, just caring about what, what people think in general. I think it, I mean, it sounds a little, a little foo-foo, but it, this could potentially keep you from your dreams and your, your, your best version of, of yourself. Yeah. Right. And I know the word dreams like sounds, you know, a little, a little foo-foo if you will, but if you're constantly worried about what people think that is directly going to take away from the action that you're putting into what you believe you should be doing, right? Like you're going to have to do things that don't always meet people's expectations and people's standards but to get to that level of your personal best you have to be willing to do that and for me like for a long time I used to I, I always think about what it is that people would think about me right and that kind of stopped me like that that contributed to a lot of the failures that I've even spoke about on the podcast even in business with the the hat company the beard oil company I got shot down by a couple barber shops I got shot down by a couple people that were, didn't want to buy the hats and that ultimately made me stop. Whereas if I really believed in my product and I felt that it was right for me, this wouldn't have been an issue. But I, I do think you have to go through that transitional phase of, yeah. of really learning first, yeah. you know? Yeah. And we're, tr we're like trained to uh, worry about what people think, especially in the social media age, mm -hmm. good or bad, you know, likes, comments. Yes. There's a volume of input now that a lot of people didn't have to deal with that were as a a age or whatever millennials whatever you want to call us have to deal with on a day-to-day -day and mm -hmm. interpret and have it not affect you right like in the past i think you've probably need like an inch barrier yep. of like sanity yep. now you need like you know 10 inches of barrier you know which is a skill mm -hmm. and we're very public a lot of people don't have the social media presence a lot of people don't put this this much this many thoughts out there and no matter what you say just the sheer volume is going to attract a certain amount of uh, uh, response, you know? So it's like something, the reason with like the real estate stuff, I put so much out there that 
good or bad, it's just such noise at this point where I enjoy the interactions, but they don't really change my trajectory right. because I'm I put so much volume out that I'm kind of counteracting mm-hmm. the volume coming in with my own volume going out. You know, like when people talk, if you're yapping at me and we're like playing basketball, if I'm yapping back, it like counteracts your trash talk, right? So like I'm trying to trash talk back yep. to the people. I love trash talking. You know that. It's fun. CV, it's a lot of fun. CB knows that well. I'm a, I beat his ass at bowling. Um, what was I going to say? The other thing. Did you though? No, you I didn't. didn't. Ah. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. Uh, the b- thing, like, I don't know if I've said it yet, but like that whole last laugh mentality, I think about that constantly where I think to specific examples, I left my job. I started selling real estate. I made minimal money. I think I made like 10 grand the first year, which is insane. Like the fact that I survived on 10, yes, I would steal toilet paper from my parents' house and toiletries and do what you got to do. Food and like, but I was, I was living lean, right? I was going out, I was dating, you know, me and Dana started when I had, I made 10 grand in a year. And at that moment, I'm sure people are like, he's an idiot. Like, what is he doing? Like in my head, I thought that I'm like, wow, this might've been the wrong decision. You know, you you stick with it. Two years in, did a little better. Still didn't make more than I did in my last job, right? Worked 10 times as much or whatever, seven times, whatever you want to call it. People still think he's an idiot. He's an idiot. Then you have a little success. Oh, maybe this wasn't a bad decision, right? right. Then you feel <clears throat> you feel the wave. Hey, how's that real estate thing going? Oh, it's getting better. Oh, yeah, well, I'm thinking about, and then all of a sudden those people that you know we're talking are now like in your corner. Then you have some level of success that's public, you know, not financially, but just like, you know, the shows and all this stuff. All of a sudden, I love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It goes from like, you know, they're talking behind your back to I love what you're doing. Right. And you know, the people that say that were the first people to talk. And it's okay. Like me and Dana talk nonsense when we're together. Mm -hmm. And I always tell her, I'm like, you can't get mad at people because, you know, a lot of it's lighthearted. Right. Right. And you, it's just what people do. Like, people chat and you judge people, good or bad. It's just a natural thing. When you see someone doing something that you think's outlandish because you don't know any of the history of it, you judge. Right. And you say, you know, well, that's kind of dumb. I don't know if I would do that. Mm-hmm. But then when they do well, you're like, I knew he was going to be I successful. Knew. You take credit for, like, their win. Yep. It's um, funny how you see that happen. To the same, so the same exact point, pretty much. Um, something that's helped me is is the understanding that people's thoughts change on a regular basis, right? And for you, if you know you're you're doing something that somebody says something negative about, your commitment level is going to directly affect over a period of time that person's thought of what it is that you're doing. So if you're consciously aware that, listen, I know at the beginning when I start something, people are going to be doubting. Yeah. You know? And then you have some level of success like that. And this is proven through everything that we I do. Mean, even with no snooze. Of course. Even with the podcast. People, I'm, I'm sure at the beginning, they were like, what the hell is this? I, I mean, we really, really didn't know what sure we were doing. Still we still did. don't know what we're doing. <laughs> um, but that's, that's besides the point. But even even professionally for me, you know, with my my job, you know, there was, there was so much kickback at first for me to be in the position that I'm in. Yeah. And even our own team members. Members, there were some of them that were not confident in me. Mm-hmm. They just really weren't, yeah. right? But now through proven action and a period of time of being as consistent as possible, I don't know if there's one person under my direct team that doesn't think that I should be in the position that I'm in. But I think you mentioned this in the past. When you did get the position, you explained to them, I think you said, you called it out. You're like, listen, I know you're probably like thinking, I don't deserve this. I'm young. Mm-hmm. All I can ask is that you just give me a chance and I'll hopefully prove to you that you know, I, I can do this job yep. and you'll be in a better position in the future, which is a hard thing to do when you can kind of put yourself in the other person's shoes that is thinking negatively yep. about you. It releases all the pressure because you're like, I know it's there. It's OK. Right. You can think that way. And then they think, oh, like he's not he doesn't get emotional about me, like having doubts. Mm. Right. And then they kind of over they're like, oh, I kind of like that. You know, there's a. There's an element when you have a confidence to work through that stuff and be like, that's cool. Like, you think whatever you want. Like, and then you think to yourself, like, in 10 years or whatever, five, however long it is, like, we'll talk again. Yep. And I won't be, the, I'll hold no grudge that you thought that way because I understand why you think that way. But now you see what happened, you right. know? Right. And some people may never turn. Some people may, you could walk on uh, Jake Paul, amazing marketer, has a lot of haters. He said, he goes, if I walked on water, people would think I couldn't swim. 
And I'm like, wow, that's a great quote. The, right? It's a good quote. But there are people that use the judgment and the the doubt to to um, keep them on track because then they think to themselves, which I think I do this as well, where they think to themselves, like, if I quit now, I'm giving all those people, I'm telling all those people who doubt me that they're right. That they're right. Which makes That's you even more, right? which you don't want to care what people think, but in certain scenarios, you can use it. As fuel. You know? I like that. Um, and I think, you know, right back to the beginning of, of this podcast where I said that, you know, somebody just in the blink of an eye, um, you know, they lost one of their, their children, right? Like, Yeah, real problems. The, the concept of, like, life really is way too short. You know, it, it, it's huge in something like this. And you only have one life to live, so why are you going to spend it thinking and worrying about what other people think of you? Yeah. Right? And it's it's... It's something we hear all the time, but it's not until you have like a real life example that it, it makes it makes so much sense. And we spend far too much myself. You spend far too much time on a day to day basis just really thinking about what other people are, are really worried about. Yeah. You know, and it, it this is a never ending process. I think, you know, for us even to be talking about this, you know, I, I introduced this topic as one of my insecurities because it is. Um, but there's a big difference in letting it like hinder what you're really going to do. And I think I'm at the point that like, although I really, you know, definitely care about what people think of me, it will never stop me. And I think when you operate from being authentic, you're able to do it versus if you act originally to make people think a certain way, then you are even more flip floppy because you're like, Oh, they don't like it. I'm gonna do something different. And then it just gets you into this like perpetual yes. changing of things because you're playing to the crowd versus if you're like, I'm going to tell this joke because I believe in this joke. And if you laugh, you're with me. If you don't, it is what it is. Yep. Right? Like mm -hmm. that's a, a much more uh, controlled approach to just everything is like if you're doing things that you actually believe in, you actually want to do, then when times get tough, when people judge, when all these doubts come in, yep. you're able to still take action because you're authentic. Mm -hmm. I love that. You know? Um, and the, the funniest thing about all of this is <laughs> I think we give ourselves too much credit and I'm I'm uh definitely guilty of this as well but people don't care nearly yeah. as much <laughs> as as you think What do they I say do. all the time CV no yeah. one cares it, It's so funny but so it's true. so counter counterintuitive to the the whole you know message that we're speaking but you know here we are sitting <laughs> and and we have an episode about this stuff and you know you you really do think about what other people's what other people's thought of, of you, your family, all of this. And at the end of the day, it might cross their mind here yeah. and there. But in the grand scheme of things, you're very, I'm very insignificant to somebody else's life. 100%. Right? But it, it's it's having to have these conversations to understand that. Like, what the hell am I worried about? This person really doesn't give a fuck anyway. I, I mean, They might think about me for five minutes and then that's it. You think about how much stuff we post. Right. Like, half the time I put stuff up, I'm like, no one cares, but I care. Yep. I enjoy this. So, mm -hmm. here, check me out doing pull-ups. Yep. You know? <laughs> right? Like, because ultimately, I'm like, majority of people do not care. There might be a couple people that enjoy it and think it's funny. Yep. But at the end of the day, I enjoy it, so it's, it's all that matters. Uh, absolutely. It's very then, selfish, but whatever. No, I, I don't think it's selfish at all. And then the um, the the hard truth also is we will never, ever be able to please everybody. Mm. Right? And and again, I've been told this my whole life. And if you do, you're pleasing no one. <laughs> I I don't know how many times I've been told that in my life. Um, that you can't please all the people, you know, in the world all of the time. It's impossible to live up to everybody's expectations because everyone has a different expectation of you. So being conscious of these thoughts as you go through the process, when you find yourself thinking about other other people's, you know, opinions of you, you gotta you gotta really remind yourself of this. And I think this is like anything else, right? Like you have to you have to consciously practice this stuff, you know. Yeah. So when you do have that thought, I Mike likes challenges. Like I challenge you as a, as the listener to when you do have that thought of like, oh, you know, what's this person thinking about me, or should I do this because I don't know how this is gonna do it anyway, mm. right? Go ahead with the action. Make sure you're you're doing what you believe to be right, because I think that's a big foundation, being authentic, like you were saying. Um, but at the end of the day, it's always impossible to please everybody. So you're gonna you're gonna make somebody unhappy along the way. A example of that that I've struggled with recently was a realization of the food show. Mm -hmm. So like because we have some type of a presence locally and our exposure to them does help their business, we've had a amazing amount of requests and people wanting me to be everywhere. 
And I had to really sit down and be like, listen, like I can do all this stuff, but at the same time, it doesn't really help all these places unless mm-hmm. I really put my time in a certain spots mm-hmm. and focus on kind of a one initiative at a time. Right. So like the wines day thing, I'm like, I could go to every wine shop and be like, you know, the guy that goes to all the wine, or I can focus on one that I like, that I talk to the people. I like their story. You know, it's a family locally that I, I vibed with. And I like what's going on and focus my energy on that. Right. Mm-hmm. So that was like a big realization of like, I'm a people pleaser in a sense of like, I like to make people happy. Right. But at the same time, I also, it, it helped creep in what are they going to think if I say no? Right. Which I usually don't struggle with. But because we had this positive effect, I found myself being like, I don't want them to hate me. But I'm like, well, they can't hate me because this is, right. I'm doing it for free. It's, yes. Like it's, and it's a, fun. Yeah. And I started this because I like to scratch my itch with these things. Mm-hmm. So I can't get away from that. I can't just do places because they want me to be there. Right. I got to do it when it feels right. Yes. And that's something I talked to um, my social media girl who's great, but she's younger. And we have these conversations. I'm like, you're going to have to get to a point where you're, you can't get emotionally like upset if someone doesn't use you to do their social media. You can't get like to the point where if someone's just like, oh, like, does Mike hate us? You got to come shoot an episode here. You can't get to the point where that influences what we do. Because once you do that, you give up control mm. and it becomes a different thing. Very well said. My my last piece here is once you give up catering to other people's opinions and thoughts, you f- actually end up finding out who you truly are. This feels good, by the way. Right? Because if you're, if you're being controlled by everybody else's thoughts, then you're really not doing anything for yourself. Correct. So you'll never find out who you, you truly are. Um, I love that. And the stress that comes from it. Mm-hmm. So I started to think of stress now yep. as like a – it's like acid. Like the more stress, it's like acid. Acid's like acid, bad. not the good acid, the bad acid. Like it's gonna burn through you. Yeah. <laughs> good one. What acid, acid is good? Drop, CV said. Enjoy. What do you mean, CV? <laughs> you, got, you ever grow to rave? Grow up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like the the stress, it's like Snickers. Oh. When you're stressed, you're not the same person. How is that a Snickers? Snickers, you're not yourself when you don't eat a Snickers. Oh, right? gotcha. When you're hangry. When you're hangry. Oh, but, like, the more amount of stress you let into your life because of, and a lot of stress, at least for me, comes from thinking about, like, what are these people going to think when it goes wrong? With clients, Dana, family members, you know, Dave, kids. Claudio. Dave, Claudio. <laughs> like, anyone in general that you're affiliated with, when you start thinking down the road of when it goes bad, how are they going to get angry with me and what's going to go wrong? It's a fine exercise, but when that creates like a negative stress, that's when it affects your actions and then becomes a cycle. Mm-hmm. And I've really started to be conscious of it lately because it's easy to creep into your head. Yes. And you don't even know you're doing it. And all of a sudden you're doing it. And you're like, what? Like, I didn't even do it yet. Let me do it to fail and then we'll figure it out, you know? Because ultimately, if you're putting in your 100% and you're doing the right thing, then their judgment, you don't have control of. I like it. Very solid. Stress, managing stress is everything. The way you get happier in life and go through it with a clear conscience and enjoyment is stress. Too bad CV's watching the World Cup and the camera's been on. Because uh, that's good. It it limits his stress (laughs) and he's enjoying it. So let him rock. Horrible. Get off my guy. Plus, at the end of the day, nobody cares. So, but 100%. This, this is the, 100%. This is this is an, a, a prime example that you should not be multitasking because of this right here. To, that <laughs> if too, you're on YouTube, apologize. like <laughs> uh, to a certain extent, the people that rock with you, the favorites in your life, are going to rock with you regardless. Yeah, right. Like the fools, the, or not the fools, the people that don't want to rock with you, you're not going to get them rock mm-hmm. with you. So why waste your energy? If they happen to change, great. But if not, who cares? Like, you're never on my team anyway. I don't want you on my team. Agreed. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know we want to keep this one nice and tight. So this will bring us to my favorite section, Dave's Dime of the Week. Dimes, dimes, dimes. And I don't know if this is um, <laughs> if this is because I see this little freaking gnat, gnat flying around, but it, it goes along Cause I'm with- Because <laughs> I'm natty. Because it goes along with- um, you know, just a, a bug in general. And this is a, a very lighthearted uh, quote. And no, this is not from Dave Regina. So the quote is, is mediocre at best. Um, is it for it me? says, I don't care what people think of me. At least mosquitoes 
find me attractive. <laughs> what and a that, quote. Right? What a quote. And that ties back in because I do wish I was getting bit up in Puerto Rico because, you know, usually around this time I'd be on a uh, vacation. But I'm over here pasty with no mosquito bites, no nothing. I hear Puerto um, Rico's phenomenal. But uh, I still don't care what people think. But I really do, though. Hopefully that confused you just you as much as it confused us. Michael, tell them where to shop, my brother. Notesnewshop.com. Like, subscribe. And uh, it's it's hoodie season. It is. Slash sweatsuit season. Slash I'm getting full sweatsuits. Do they, some don't match, though. We got to make yeah, sure they match. Yeah, we got to get the- The grays the are a little- yeah. The gray pants, very nice. Yeah. Gray hoodie doesn't completely match. Yeah, it's a, it's a little lighter. You have the light ash color, and then you have the uh, heather color. Like I am when I dress my kids. I like matching items. So I know- that they go together. <laughs> my guy. CB, you got anything for us, my brother? No? Listen, happy holidays. Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. We are very grateful for your one listen or if you've been rocking with us 100%. Um, on Instagram or the past 127 episodes. If you've made it this far, listen, it's bear season. Let's go. Get in that gym. Let's get burly. Let's get burly. And then we'll cut in for the for the summer. It is a little cold in here, too. It's cold. All right. Um, yeah, so let's get it. As always, stop snoozing. Get up and get after it. Ooh. I wanted to jump you on that one. I wanted to start. I wanted to say stop snoozing and get after it. Just Leave me alone. That's another Effie in the Books. Go follow us on Instagram and Facebook at No Snooze Podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, No Snooze.